Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great weekend. It's Saturday right now, and we're going to get into some profitability possibilities for the miners after the heavy event. We ran a bunch of numbers. Uh, well, yesterday was a hot day out, humidity, everything else wasn't a good day to be outside. So I spent about six, seven hours pulling data in for all the miners, the AC miners that the miners do have, and getting the watts on all of those, figuring out what they have as far as what the average is, what the joules per tariff average is, and everything else there. We'll get into all the data here, but there's a lot of stuff that we're going to talk about. Also, I had to re-record this video because MicroPig on Twitter reminded me that some of the miners were being priced at two cents per kilowatt hour, and somewhere at three cents, I had it a little bit higher than that. So I pulled in the data again this morning and re-recording this video right now for you guys to make sure that we have the most accurate data for you guys. Okay, so appreciate the information from MicroPig. And as always, not financial advice for anything only, please do your own research. I'm investing in following coins and companies for full disclosure. And if you enjoy this type of content, hit the like button, subscribe, helps me out tremendously. Okay, so let's get into what's going on here with all the data here that we have. So what we're looking for here is, well, let's, let's take a look at what I did um, yesterday. So for all the miners that we have, you know, I've been tracking all of them for the ASICs that they've been purchasing. The only thing I didn't track very well was the watts per miner. So I added that in yesterday for all of these bit farms, clean spark, Core Scientific, everybody here that I track, I added in uh, the numbers that I could find for the miners as close to those as possible. So a lot of times these miners would provide a batch that they were buying, but they could have miner X, Y, and Z in there. Those could be different uh, terahashes and different wattages. And they provided us with basically the miner speed average that they were buying at that batch uh, number. So what I did was I looked on, um, what is it called? What to mine.com. They have a miners page there that shows all the miners that are available to mine um, Bitcoin. And they have basically a terahash and things like that. And I tried to uh, match them up by the manufacturer as best as I could based on the terahash that's being reported to us. Okay. So that's where those numbers are coming in. Then I took those numbers, multiplied it by the number of miners they have to get the total waters being used by those miners. We have the sum down here. And then we took that and divided it by the number of miners to get what the actual average wattage is per miner that they're using. From there, we can figure out what the joules per terahash is, which is over here. So that data is being used in the other spreadsheet that I'll show you guys here in a minute in a second. The other thing that I did was I took the quarterly results for Q1 for all these guys and looked at their um, operating expenses. So let's see here. Revenues. So I took in, I tried to take in selling general administration and anything else that was possibly added to that as well. So that's basically what I'm doing and taking that and dividing it by three to get the monthly uh, cost on that. Okay, so there's that data. So that took a while to put in. Then we have data over here. So the data that we had over there, we put it over here. So we have the average terahash per miner, what's being calculated, average watts per miner, total X that they're gonna get to that's being reported as being bought already. Monthly expenses, this is where that's Q1 data is being pulled in. And then also I looked at their uptime. So if we look at their uptime for like bit farms, we can see here that uh, they're pretty much uptime was pretty uh, like at almost at 100%. Like we got in April was 30, May was 31, June was 30. Uh, so I went back on some of these guys to the beginning of the year and averaged out how many days they were mining on average for the month, divided that by 30, and then we got our percentage as far as their uptime was. Okay, so that's where that's coming from. Uh, this data over here is the same thing that's in the chart. So we're looking at two cents, three cents, four cents, five cents, six cents, and seven cents per kilowatt hour cost. And where would the miners have to be at at that point to break even? So if we look at the very first one that we have here is going to be Argo. Argo right now, obviously, it's become 40 some thousand. Let's bring that down a little bit. But here's what we're looking at. This is the profitability of when the miners are actually profitable. So this is the first line here, the ASIC miners. And then when you tack on the monthly expenses that they have, this is when they become profitable down here. Okay, so that's kind of where all the data is coming from. So if we look at it, uh, and we can go down two cents, we can go up even more than that. But basically what we're going to do is there's a couple, couple of miners that are at like two and a half cents, three cents. That's Cypher, I believe, and uh, Wolf as well, Terra Wolf. They have really low uh, nuclear energy pricing on that. Don't know if that also includes any of the transmission fees, any of the taxes being added into it, if that's just the cost that they're getting for the electricity itself, but not everything else added into it. So that's why I put in here the two cents 
all the way up to seven cents and we get a nice chart here as far as where the miners could possibly come in at. Most of the miners are around like four, four and a half, five cents. Some miners might be up a little bit higher than that. If they use hosting, you could be up to like five and a half, maybe six cents on that. So that would include like Marathon, Argo now also. Um, somebody else that does also hosting would be uh, Sphere 3D, I believe. They do quite a bit of hosting, but digital also. So those are the ones, but this is kind of the range that we're in at right now. My next target for data acquisition is to find out exactly what each miner is paying for kilowatt hour. If I can figure that out, I can pretty much know exactly where their break even point is going to be possibly. We'll also do this update again when they provide their Q2 data, which is going to be coming out here in the next month or so. So when that's all in, we'll redo this again to get, well, we'll use the most recent data that we have as far as what their costs are. So that way we'll have a little better understanding of what things might look like after the having event. Okay, so let's just go through this really quick. I'll try to keep this uh, on pace. We're going to leave this at about four because like most miners are around four cents per four to five, right? So then they're somewhere around there for their costs. So let's take a look at Argo. Argo right now monthly cost is at 1.6 million. Their uptime is about 80%. Their efficiency is at 31.46. That leads us to be about at $51,750 here on average. Uh, probably bring that down a little bit. There we go. So around 51,000 was where they're going to be profitable after the having event. Okay, next is going to be Bitdeer. Bitdeer is, uh, monthly expenses is at 1.4, almost 1.5 million a month. They're going to be at about 7.9 exa hash. They could go beyond that to, before the having. We'll have to see, but this is just what's being reported for all the miners. So I'm not going to repeat that again. Average uptime is about 76% for them right now. That's being calculated from what I have data on them. And based on that, they would need to be at, let's see here, at four cents right around, let's see, bring that down a little bit, right around 35250 right now to be profitable at that point. Okay, next is going to be Bit Digital. Bit Digital would have to be right around 49250 to break even. Their monthly expense is at 1.79. Uh, Exahash is at 2.1 right now. Average uptime is 100%, so they've been actually really good on that. Next is Bitfarms. Bitfarms has 2.7 million in monthly expenses. Exahash is at 7.1. Their uptime is 100%. Their joules per terash efficiency is at 31.89. They would need to be at approximately, let's see, at 38,750 to be profitable at that time. Next is going to be CleanSpark. CleanSpark has 4. Point, almost 7 million in expenses monthly. Exahash they're supposed to get to is about 17.5. This is everything that they have and plus purchased. Now, they did state that they are going to be removing some of the older miners that are less efficient. That would probably get them down to about 16 to 16.5 exahash, depending on which miners they get rid of. That would help them with the efficiency number. It's not bad right now. Their uptime is 100%, but their efficiency is at 25.72 joules per terahash. That would possibly improve that by a little bit, not by much. The miners that they do have that are older are like 88 terahash, 90, 95 terahash, somewhere around there. So that would help them out, maybe get them down to maybe 24 something. Uh, efficiency wise, which would then also help them get a better lower price of uh, where they are actually profitable. So at that time, or right now at least, I'm at 30,000 is where they would be profitable at four cents, right? They're somewhere around between four and five cents. We don't know exactly where they are at. Uh, next one is going to be Cypher. So Cypher has about 5.8 million in monthly expenses as of the last quarterly results. 7.35 exahash is what they have reported. Average uptime is about 85%. Their joules per terahash efficiency is at 30.74. They would be at about 54,000 right now. Let's see if we can maybe get that down a little bit lower. 53,750 to break, to be profitable at that point. Okay. Next is going to be Cores. Cores right now has 7.2 million monthly expenses. That's a lot. They got to bring that down a lot before the having event. Um, they're at about 15 exahash right now. I think they're pretty much fully installed. They've been selling some miners as well to cover some of their payments and debt and things like that. Their average uptime is 93% and their um, efficiency is at 31.22 joules per terahash. They would need to be at, if they're at 4 cents, let's see, bring this down a little bit closer to our number, and that would be right there. So 42,250 is their point where they would be profitable at that point uh, at that time, okay? Um, next is going to be, let's see here, DigiHost. 
Digihost has very low monthly expenses at 308,000 right now. Their extra hash is at only 1.095. Their average uptime efficiency is at 93%, and their efficiency is at 29.89 joules per terahash right now. That means that they would need to be at approximately, bring that down a little bit, let's see, right there, 34,500 for them to break, to be profitable at that point, right? Now, Bitcoin would have to obviously go up for all these guys along, if network, network hash rate also goes up, that has to go up as well in order for them to remain profitable. But if Bitcoin goes down below that, well, they're not going to be profitable at that point. Okay, uh, next one is going to be, let's see here, DMG. DMG also has very low monthly expenses, 321,000. And Exahash is at 1.232. Their average uptime is 90%. Efficiency is at 28.74 joules per terahash, which isn't too bad. And they would be profitable at Bitcoin price of approximately here, 33,250, it looks like, yeah. Okay, so that's for them. DMG's uh, Hive is next. Hive at four cents, uh, let's see here. Monthly expenses 4.4 million. Exahash right now is at 3.9, almost four exahash. They said they want to get out, get to, I believe, six exahash by the end of the year. But they haven't purchased anything to get them there. So that's why we're being reported on that. If they improve that, that should help them out because right now, um, their average uptime is really good. It's 100%. They're very efficient as far as running, but their miners are relatively older miners. Their efficiency is at 33.72 joules per terahash, which isn't good. So that's why it's kind of hurting them a little bit here right now. They would have to be at approximately to break even or to be profitable at this point in time. That would be right there at $62,000 per Bitcoin uh, because of the not so efficient miners right now. Okay, and their low hash rate. If you have pretty good efficient miners, you can definitely get uh, a lower need for Bitcoin price at that point. Okay, next is going to be HUT8. Hut 8, let's see here, Hut 8 is, is a tough one also. Um, so Hut 8 has monthly expenses of 3.72 million right now. They're at 3.2 exahash. Now they're only operating at like 1.6 because they have problems with the drum heller facility. Uh, and if they get that improved, that should help them out. Uh, hopefully by that time when the having happens, they will get that resolved and get that all up and running. But their average uptime right now is at 83%. And I'm using the data from last year because of the problems that they're having with drum heller this year. I'm not basically dinging them for that, uh, but I do think, I'm hoping that they can get this stuff resolved and be up and running all uh, 100%. Uh, but their up, average uptime was 83% last year. Otherwise, it would have been down like 50 some percent right now, which um, but it would knock them down really bad. Their efficiency for miners also not the greatest, 37.2. They have a lot of older miners as well. They need to upgrade those, okay? So right now, they would need Bitcoin, and bear with me, this is going to take a while to scroll up to where they are actually going to be profitable here. Uh, there we go. Okay, so right there. 72,500 is where they're going to need Bitcoin to be after the having event to be profitable based on because they're inefficient miners, okay? That's eating a lot of their uh, profits through electricity costs and everything else. Uh, now, if they merge with USBTC, we can take a look at here that their monthly expense is going to be, I'm guessing it's going to be around 5.7 million. That's with the combination of USBTC and their expenses. Um, they're probably going to cut some fat over there, I'm guessing, when that does happen, uh, just to keep costs down a little bit low. But they're supposed to get to 7.5 exahash. Now, I don't have any data as far as where USBTC is performing as far as uptime is concerned. So I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt at being at 90%. We'll see once they actually merge with them, where they are actually at at that point, okay? But right now, based on what they're providing with the miners, I'm also providing that with HUT8. Let me see, take a look at it here. HUT8, when they do merge with USBTC, I think I put it down here. Where did I put it down? I think it's over here. Going back to this year, I put it in here somewhere. Where did I put it? Oh, there it is, USBTC merger. So adding about 4.2 exahash to them. And I'm guessing that the miners are maybe the 100 terrace miners. So that's kind of what I'm basing that on. Once we have more data on that, we'll obviously update this, but just so you guys know what that's being calculated by. Okay, so right now with them being uh, combined, they would have an efficiency of 32.66. And at that point, they would have to have Bitcoin at approximately 53,000 to be profitable uh, at that time, okay? Next is gonna be Iris Energy. Iris Energy has 1.34 million in monthly expenses, roughly. They're at 5.7 exahash right now. Their average uptime is good as well, 100%. That's great. Their efficiency for miners, 29.66. 
which is also not too bad. And at that time, they would have to be at, let me see here, right around 32500 to be profitable for Bitcoin, okay? Next is going to be Marathon. Marathon would have to be, let's see, Marathon's got quite a bit of expenses as well, 5.14 million in monthly expenses, roughly. They have about 24.34 that's supposed to be getting installed before the having event. If that happens, that's going to be great, but their average uptime is also not that great. It's 81% based on the last six months of data that we have for them. Uh, but the good thing is for them is that their efficiency per miner is going to be about 24.25 joules per terahash, and that is a result of them buying a lot of the 140 terahash miners from Bitmain, which has great, uh, I think it's like 20.35 joules per terahash or something like that, and they also have 100 terahash miners as well. But that definitely have, definitely improves their number there. It also helps them with where Bitcoin has to be for them to be profitable. Okay, so with them, it looks like we're at 28,500 at four cents per kilowatt hour. That's where they would be profitable right now. So definitely not a worry there. Okay, next is gonna be Mawson. Mawson has about 1.65, almost 1.66 million in monthly expenses. Hash rate is about 1.8 roughly. Their average uptime is about 80% and their efficiency on miners is 31.64 joules per terahash. They would need Bitcoin to be approximately, let's see here, bring that down a little bit, right about there, about 61,500 to be profitable right now. Okay, next is going to be Riot. Riot has 4,225,000 in monthly expenses. Exahash, they're supposed to get to 20.1 exahash. Their average uptime is about 80%, calculated by the last six months. And their efficiency is at 26.27 joules per terahash. Um, this brings them down to a Bitcoin price of approximately, let's take a look at it here, right there. 30,250 is where they would be profitable at this current time, okay? They have bought a lot of these new miners from, I think it was, uh, I can't remember who it was from, but they're the emerging cool miners. They have higher wattages, but they also have higher uh, hash rates as well. So that's why you, if you're looking at this and you're seeing 3,556 as the average, that's why, okay? And we'll get into the other things. So definitely not a concern there for Riot. Next one is going to be Sphere 3D. Sphere 3D has about 1.157 million in monthly expenses. Exit hash is going to be at 1.8. Their average uptime is about 90%. Their efficiency is at 29.5 joules per terahash on average. And their price for Bitcoin would have to be approximately here, right there, 46,500 to be profitable at that time. And then finally, last one here is Wolf. Wolf would be, let's see here. 2.164 million in monthly expenses, exit hash 7.95. Uh, average uptime is 91%, not too bad. Tw uh, 25 joules per terahash is their efficiency on the miners on average right now. So that's also pretty good there. They would need Bitcoin to be at approximately at 30,250, and that would be where they would be profitable at four cents. Now I think they have like three, three and a half cents, something like that. So you can see that they would then be down to like 25,000 if that's the case. Okay, so. We'll cover all of these. So based on all of this, we have this nice graph here that we can see where everybody's at. Obviously, Mara came in number one because they have the most efficient miners and the most miners. Uh, and they could probably improve that even better if they actually reduce their overhead cost. Next is CleanSpark here. CleanSpark's between, I can't see it over here on the number. It's not pointing, it, but it's like around 18 something to 46, depending on the price of the electricity. If they're around five cents, somewhere around there, then we're looking at around 35,000 for Bitcoin to be profitable at that point. And that's kind of where I'm looking at all these miners here. But you can see the data here for it. I'm not going to go through it all. But obviously the top five are Marathon, CleanSpark, Wolf, Riot, and Iris Energy at the current time frame. And then the next top five, the next top ten would be DMG, Digi, BitDeer, and BitFarms. Possibly Cores, I think, would be added in there as well. But right around there. Those are like the top ten miners as far as going into the heavy event that might have the best chance of actually making it through it. Okay, depending where all of these grow. So key takeaways from this. The thing that's gonna obviously help the miners the most is monthly expenses, getting those down as much as they can, getting newer miners before the heavy event happens to bring down their jewels per terahash efficiency overall, getting rid of some of the older miners uh, that they have. Then the next part is gonna be obviously uh, cost per electricity cost per kilowatt hour. Whatever they have on that, they have to obviously deal with what they do have. They can't really change it that much. Uh, they can possibly get new contracts and things like that, possibly. But that's going to be one of those things. And what else could they do? Uh, 
I think just grow. Some of these guys just need to grow a little bit more than where they are right now to help offset some of the costs they do have uh, in, into the having event. Okay, so let me know what you guys think of all this data. I try to keep it as accurate as possible. Uh, but if I do make a mistake, let me know. I'll correct it in the next video or the next time we do this video uh, after we get the Q2 results for everybody, okay? So that's it. So this will be obviously available to my Patreon members for later on today. Um, I'll see if I can do this for the YouTube members as well, but maybe I'll do that chart um, for th them. Okay, so I'm going to start rambling on here. Before I do that, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe. Helps me out tremendously. And let me know what you guys thought of all this, all right? Let me know where, where, you, where your miners stand and things like that. And we'll talk about it in the comments down below. But thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.